In this video, you'll witness the true power of the GTX 4070 Ti, traffic rule violations, and see why everyone wants ray tracing and DLSS. Welcome to Henkes Gaming, and guess who I am? Today we'll have a look at Cyberpunk 2077. We'll dive into most graphical settings, and there are a lot here. See how all non-ray trace settings compare to one another, and we'll have a look if we can get ray trace mode running in 4K at 60 FPS. Let's have a look. We'll start off looking at some presets. As you can see here, in the Ultra preset without any resolution scalers, so no DLSS, FSR, XCSS, or Cyberpunk's own dynamic resolution, it's a beautiful day in Night City, running at a nice and steady 45 FPS. Let's see how the low preset does. And this does well, getting about 76, 77 FPS, so that's an increase of about 69 FPS in total. What I mainly notice is that you lose distant shading details. I would have thought that the reflections would be worse, but looking at the water I don't notice that much of a change. But who wants to play at a low preset? No, give us that glorious ray tracing! So, with the preset set to Ray Tracing Ultra, still without any resolution scalers, we get a less glorious 20 FPS. But later on we will enable DLSS and it makes for a world of difference. So in this case we lose about 44% FPS. But it looks great Night City. If I have Ray Tracing in Night City I want to live there as well. Well, probably not, but okay. Reflections don't change that noticeable, but from this distance you mainly have the water and no windows or puddles on the ground, and those do look really nice ray traced. Shadows are a bit softer, lightning looks great, but just for fun, setting the ray tracing overdrive preset still without any resolution scalers, already know my computer will probably implode, but hey, where's the fun in no imploding computers? And yes, coming in at a steady 0 FPS, it's one frame per multiple seconds. Now of course I'm curious how this will run when we enable DLSS. And now, with DLSS set to the quality level, we run at 29 FPS. That's even better than running the Ray Traced Ultra preset without DLSS. And of course it looks great. Going to Ray Traced Overdrive mode with DLSS set to Performance mode, we get an FPS count to 4344, and that's almost the same as our normal non-Ray Traced Ultra preset without any resolution scalers. So use resolution scalers. These techniques are powerful. For most comparisons, however, I will leave them off to get a good base performance indication, and also resolution scalers or different resolution scalers could perform different. Which makes comparing settings difficult. As we all know, we the cyberpunk players, Night City looks best of course at, yes, you guessed it, at night. So let's have a quick look at the Ultra preset and the Ray Traced Ultra preset side by side at night. Both on DLSS quality by the way, even though I just said that I would leave resolution scalers off. My bad. But I think both still look great actually, and if you didn't have the side-by-side -side comparison, I doubt you would notice the differences. But look at the center pillar with the commercials going around it, and then notice the light it projects on the building behind it. On the ray trace side you can see the light going by on the building as the commercials scroll around the pillar, and that just looks awesome. And I think it's that kind of thing with ray tracing. If you don't have it, the game looks great, but I think those kind of details are fantastic, and if you have the horsepower to enable ray tracing, I would definitely encourage you to do it, or to enable it. Performance wise here, you get about twice the FPS for turning off ray tracing, so ray tracing definitely costs you something. Now let's first have a look at some non-ray trace settings. What I discovered during testing by the way, is that when you turn on ray tracing, some other settings are just ignored. And that's not really mentioned anywhere. So lucky for you, you have me to tell you that. Other than that not being told, most settings have a nice description for them so you know what they do in the world when you enable, disable or set a quality level for them. The first of the settings we're gonna have a look at, Ambient Occlusion. One of those settings which get ignored when ray tracing is turned on by the way. 
But first here, we haven't turned ray tracing on. And you can see how they look. Left this off, all the way to the right where it's set to ultra. With each step you increase the ambient occlusion, it gets a bit darker. I think most of the time low would actually work just fine. Just don't turn AO off. Turning this off makes objects so less grounded in the world. Even with low, just having that little bit of shadow below things makes them believable, makes them feel real in the world. Comparing with the high setting, low gives you an increase of about 4% in FPS, medium 2% and you'll never turn this off, so it doesn't matter how much of an increase you get. If you turn on ray tracing, however, it doesn't even matter at which level you set ambient occlusion. Even if you turn it off, ray trace setting just gives you this ambient occlusion. And by the way, that is specifically the ray trace lighting setting. Or, of course, the path traced setting. Ray trace lighting, however, doesn't come cheap and costs about 80% of FPS. Ooh, that's a lot. But turn on those resolution scalers and your world of pain is over. And also you get more benefits of ray trace lighting, not just the ambient occlusion. But we'll look at that later. Next up, cascaded shadows. And cascaded shadows are shadows projected through the power of sunlight. You also have local shadows and lightning, and that is light coming from actual in-game lights. But cascaded shadows. Looking at both cascaded shadow range and resolution side by side, no difference in performance as you can see. So leave these both at high, I would say. And here's a small sample of why you should leave them at high. They just look better. And since there's no performance difference, which I don't get actually, I would guess that if something looks better, it runs worse. But apparently not here. So high it is. Moving on to local shadows. You are looking at off versus high versus ray trace from left to right. And by the way, I am combining the local shadow quality and local shadow mesh quality here. Off and high don't really matter performance wise. Again, I don't get this, why not? Anyways, ray trace does cost you about 13%, but those shadows do look nicer. A bit softer and with that a bit more realistic. And yes, I do often stand in front of my car with the headlights on to see how my shadow looks, so I know when shadows look more realistic. Reflections up next, starting by not having them at all. Now let's get this straight. If you dare to play cyberpunk with screen space reflections and ray trace reflections turned off, I will hunt you down. This game is all about neon lights reflecting in puddles or on soaked streets and you turn off reflections? How dare you! Comparing against ultra settings though, you do win about 40% in FPS. But you don't want to play the game this way. Now, looking at all settings which aren't off and not ray tracing, low actually has quite a frame rate improvement over ultra while not even looking that bad, 33%. You do notice that with each quality step reflections get a bit sharper. But I think low gets you in the vibe. If you are in need of frames, you can set reflections to low and still live that cyberpunk dream. Psycho quality costs a lot with not that much of a win if you ask me. Running about 48% worse than ultra and it certainly doesn't look 48% better. What does look 84% better is ray trace reflections and costing even less than psycho reflections with only 20% less performance than the ultra screen space reflections. Also you get this, reflections in windows or glass. And that looks so good. Turn on those ray trace reflections. And if you don't want to have much to do with ray tracing, just turn on the ray trace reflections, as these make such a big difference, I think. Do it! Do it now! Well, enough about ray tracing. Let's look at fog, volumetric fog resolution to be precise. Now I'm in front of your favorite cyberpunk bar, Lizzie's bar, or is your favorite the afterlife? Well, that doesn't matter for now. And I do notice a difference in performance, but I'm not entirely sure what the actual fog is. That smoke could just be a transparent texture, which is not fog. Looking at the performance, there is a difference. Low, as well as medium, give you a performance win of about 11% over ultra settings. While I don't notice a real quality change here. However, let's have a look at this. 
Notice that smoke popping up in a weird way? You see that? I think that looks horrible. Really distracting. And you'll notice it on rainy environments under the street lights as well. Keeping volumetric fog resolution on ultra seems for me to be the only way to not have that weird popping up. And I find it really distracting, so best keeping this setting to ultra. LOD, level of detail, next. And high is the highest setting, and actually I find that even too low. I was driving in this lovely neighborhood and see that pop in of, what is it, dirt? Anyways, I want my dirt to be lying around at all time. No popping in all of a sudden. So to make sure matters don't get worse, leaving this too high. Also, didn't really notice a difference in performance. Now let's go back to some ray tracing settings and see what the differences are between them. Starting off with this weird shadow glitch without ray traced options. Above the lamp post, see that dark shadow popping in or out? Using ray trace lighting, problem solved. So another good reason to enable ray trace lighting. And just around the corner, we find another nice example of those small details ray tracing add. Left you see lighting without ray tracing, and right ray trace lighting is set to medium. I just found this a nice detail of something you wouldn't miss if you saw it side by side, but, but knowing this you want that lighting on the right. I know you do. Checking ray trace lighting medium versus ultra versus psycho quickly. You see, medium is a bit darker, but these changes aren't that noticeable. Performance-wise, these are about the same, I would say. Okay, okay, I know there are different numbers, but let's say these are the same, otherwise I don't get it. Why would medium run worse than ultra? Going back to our lamppost for a second, here we do notice a bit of difference in performance between medium lighting, ultra or psycho. Medium vs Psycho running about 36% better. And I don't notice that much of a change in lighting detail by the way. So perhaps keep ray trace lighting to medium if you are going to use the ray trace route and not enable path tracing. Now all this ray tracing is nice to have, but artifacting. In all of these shots, ray trace reflections are turned on. On the left DLSS is turned off, in the middle DLSS performance is used, and on the right DLSS quality is used. See that weird artifacting? I don't want that, but I do want DLSS to be enabled just because the performance win it gives me. Now in a case of serendipity I found a solution in the form of a mod. Or is it a mod? Maybe it's just some config settings. Anyways, in the description of this video I've placed a link to this mod and instructions how to set it up. It's a ray tracing optimization mod. I was looking for this to improve the ray trace performance. What this mod basically does, well it does more but let's keep it simple, is reduce the amount of rays it sent and reduce the amount of bounces those rays make. So by default two rays are sent and these make two bounces. With this mod only one ray is sent and this ray only makes one bounce. And while I was testing this, I noticed that the artifacting was gone as you can see here. Well, it may not be gone everywhere, but it's significantly reduced. So love that, because that artifacting was a bit distracting too. Now lastly for this video, I ran the benchmark without the mod and with the mod, with all ray traced options enabled, ray traced lighting set to medium and the difference is about 5%. So with the mod you get a 5% increase of FPS, which is a nice difference to have, I think. Now for the optimized settings, I will put some in the descriptions down below. Having a look at different combinations of options, turning ray tracing on or off or using just ray trace reflections, for example, so you can have a look yourself and see what fits you best. But I'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching my third ever video on YouTube. If you like this, leave one, a like I mean, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Next, no, the week after next week, we'll have another video which will be about Minecraft Ray Traced or Forza Horizon. We'll see. How do?